I'm still working on the casting Wolverine video, don't worry. But today, I want to spend some time just answering a simple question that I get constantly. When the X-Men eventually enter the Marvel Cinematic Universe, how will the movies deal with the idea of mutants? Will they be brand new? Will they have been around for a while? Were they created by a specific event? And most importantly, why are they different from everyone else with superpowers? So I have some answers, some potential ways that Marvel could integrate the mutants into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is not a prediction, nor is it necessarily the most comic accurate version. This is just a way that I think it could work. If I am introducing the entire X pantheon into the MCU, just like where does everyone fit and why? So to begin, let's look at some characters. First, the ancient mutants. There are more than a few mutants who have historically been around for a long time. Characters like Apocalypse, Selene, Exodus are all centuries old. So it is easy to have those characters turn into legends, have maybe a picture of a symbol so associated with Apocalypse show up on a wall in a museum that Stephen Grant works in. You know, that right there, that's the symbol of N. Sabanut. He was a pharaoh who everyone thought he had like a, like a spaceship. Woo! Like this gators. That's all we need. Eventually, those characters will make their way into the narrative, but for now, they're just stories people tell. Time travelers. This one's pretty specific, but this one is easy now. We could have Cable, Deadpool, and Domino notice an anomaly in the time stream and do a jump to fix it. Then they could just be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It would even give Deadpool's fourth wall breaking a purpose to make it kind of unique because he's the only one that remembers the Fox X-Men universe. Now, there are rumors that something like this was going to happen at the end of Multiverse of Madness, and I think think it makes sense. I hope they manage to fit it into one of these movies. Next, let's talk about old mutants. So these are mutants that are around 100-ish years old, starting with Magneto. In my Magneto pitch video, I talk about my ideal Magneto being an active mutant freedom fighter. Regardless of how he is kept alive, we could absolutely have a Magneto who has been secretly freeing persecuted mutants throughout history, creating his brotherhood of mutants. That way, when we meet Magneto in the present day, he is a fully formed character with his own crew, and we don't need to explain any of it. Wolverine. Speaking of Wolverine, one great thing that the Ultimate Comics did was introduce the idea of Lucky Jim. In the Ultimates War 2, where the Ultimates, which is the Marvel Ultimate Universe Avengers, were fighting the Ultimate X-Men, Captain America is looking over files of the mutants, and he notices James Howlett. Thor says, oh, you know that guy? And Cap explains that he ran some missions during World War II with James. Everyone called James Lucky Jim, since no matter how many times he got shot, Shot, Jim just walked it off and kept fighting. I love this idea that Logan has been working with the Allies since the beginning, but no one, not even Logan himself, really knew what a mutant was. So he just knew he could heal very well, and then he joined the armed forces, ended up fighting alongside Captain America and other World War II figures, but he was not Wolverine yet. They even say they might make a Captain Carter movie. That sounds great. Throw Wolverine in there as Lucky Jim. I think most of the old mutants should probably be Lucky Jims. People who with hindsight were clearly mutants, but at the time seemed like people with slightly superhuman skills. You can do this for Destiny, who can see the future. Like, we don't need to see it, but we can hear stories about that time Cersei ran into a woman who could effortlessly blend into any group of people, and after the fact, Cersei realizes, that was probably Mystique. I think that's a fun way to have mutants exist in the MCU without actually existing. Sinister. I have mentioned Mr. Sinister a few times in previous videos. I'm a big fan. He's creepy, campy, and strange. There are so many fun Mr. Sinister stories still to tell. And since Nathaniel Essex has been around for a while, we have lots of opportunity to seed him through time. I would love it if Mr. Sinister has been working behind the scenes for the last hundred or so years, learning about mutants, cloning some of his own mutants, creating the Marauders, he could also totally have been a Nazi who experimented on Eric like they probably should have done in X-Men First Class. And that could be Sinister's origin so he could be a villain in a future movie. The Hellfire Club. They are a secret society, so they're secret. But it could be more complicated than that. In fact, we can play out Sebastian Shaw's ascent when mutants start appearing. Originally, the Hellfire Club is just your average secret society where everyone dresses like Ben Franklin. Then some of the members turn out to be mutants. The club leadership attempts to purge the mutants, but the mutants survive and kill the human members, and the proper Hellfire Club is born. I think that would be a lot of fun, and a good way to show that things are changing. There are big paradigm shifts within the Marvel Universe. The X-Men. Okay, let's talk about the X-Men. I believe they should exist in their own corner of the world, doing their own thing, and they have for maybe 25 years. Xavier is doing his best to keep young mutants isolated from the world. He fears that they will be persecuted if they are revealed to the public. Xavier uses his telepathy to erase the minds of anybody who gets too close. He has a few contacts within the 
the government that helped him go about his business, but apart from those people, no one knows that the Xavier Institute is a shelter for mutants. Even some of the parents of the kids at the Institute have their minds kind of wiped, so even they aren't sure what this school is. And it has been like this for a while. A few students like Scott, Gene, Angel, Beast, and Iceman have been at the Institute for 10, maybe 15 years, and since they joined, Xavier has been recruiting other gifted youngsters. So that's why they have not been involved in any conflicts thus far. They're staying out of trouble, just trying to live peaceful lives at their school. Now this brings up another question. Does Nick Fury know about mutants? Specifically, does he know about Charles Xavier's mutants? And I mean, Nick Fury's secrets are supposed to have secrets. He should know about mutants. I think you could play this a couple different ways. Have Fury know that there's something going on, like he's heard of people like Mystique and Sinister running around. He's also aware of the Weapon Plus programs that have been taking place in different governments. But Fury does not know how mutants work. He's not aware of the X gene. No one besides Xavier and Sinister really should be. But Fury knows that there are some special people that just pop up every so often with no explanation, who have wildly different powers but seem to be somehow related to one another. There's there's just too many similarities for it to be a complete coincidence. Fury also knows about characters like Magneto, who in my perfect vision have been operating independently as freedom fighters for decades. Again, he knows something special is going on with Magneto, but he doesn't know what. And perhaps Fury is working with a young Bolivar Trask to discover a way to neutralize these new superhumans. They're creating sentinels to fight these superhumans should one ever attempt to take over the world. And yes, that is something I'm pulling from X-Men Evolution, a show that gets referenced like once per X-Men video, apparently. And Fury is aware of Xavier. He knows there's a secret institute in Westchester, New York, where superhuman children are being collected and educated. But Fury also knows Xavier is not trying to do anything dangerous, so he just lets Xavier go about his business. Fury keeps an eye on him, but the Xavier children are not his primary concern. Now we have another question, perhaps the most important question. Why why do mutants show up now? I imagine there will be an event that kicks off the mutant generation. After all, they aren't there now, at least in the present day of the MCU, whatever, like 2026. There aren't many of them. So if we have stories where many mutants start existing over the world, like something has to change. So I have a few options. First one, Tiamat the Dreaming Celestial. Killing Tiamat released an unbelievable amount of energy that kickstarted the dormant X gene that already existed in 0.0001% of the population. Makes enough sense, you know, that energy needs to go somewhere. I also would not be surprised if this is tied to the blip. The energy used to return all of these people to existence had a few unintended effects. This is how the deviance being reborn is explained in Eternals. Hell, maybe Bruce Banner making the snap that creates the blip specifically as some sort of extra radioactivity tied to human mutants or something. I don't know. It's dumb. Ignore that part. But the rest of it makes sense. We've also got multiverse energy connected to Kang or Doctor Strange or Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm not sure how I The X-Men. Out here has to do with Spider-Man, I think. Either way, perhaps the presence of the very multiverse creates mutants. When there are multiple variants of the same person, one of them in one reality becomes a mutant. That could even mean in other universes we have different characters that are mutants, like Falcon and Zemo are mutants instead of Cyclops and Magneto. Wouldn't that be fun? Who knows? Maybe. It could be. I think it could be fun. That's, you know, that's just me. This is my video, so I think it could be fun. We could also use the Hex. This is the easiest one to retcon. We don't know anything about how the Hex works. It seems like when certain people go through the Hex, it messes with their DNA, like Monica. So maybe everyone that was in the Hex was turned into a mutant or something like a mutant. And maybe it works like a disease where people that have been in the Hex come into contact with people with the X gene and then the X gene activates. That way, the phenomenon did originate in Westview, but it's able to spread quickly without anybody noticing. Also, side note, not to nitpick, not unlike my podcast, mostly nitpicking. Here comes something that is just for me, but you know, come with me on this journey. We don't know where Westview is, right? It's a made up town in New Jersey. Well, I think we can figure it out. As someone who grew up in New Jersey and also reads lots of comic books and watches all of these shows, I think I'm uniquely qualified here. Now there is no town called Westview, New Jersey. There is a town called Westfield, but that's a completely different place. In the comics, Wanda and Vision moved to a town called Leonia, New Jersey. And I could be convinced that Leonia is the real Westview. However, there is an area called Westview in a town called Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. It is an unincorporated community in Ridgefield Park, so it's not the entire town, but it's part of the town. And Ridgefield Park happens to be very close to Leonia. Therefore, I believe if we have to find a real place that is Westview, I believe Ridgefield Park, New Jersey is the inspiration for Westview. Why do I care? Well, I grew up in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. So Mr. Feige, if I don't hear from you, I will just assume I am from WandaVision.
Another reason we could have all these mutants could be Cosmic, the entity known as the Phoenix Force, craves life, balance maybe, something like that. At the end of the Avengers X-Men event, the Phoenix Force was used to create mutants. It brought them into existence. Maybe something similar could be done with the Phoenix Force in the MCU. It could even show up in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 on its way to Earth. Maybe Tiamat the Dreaming Celestial's death caused the Phoenix Force to come to Earth to investigate that? And that's why the Phoenix Force is on Earth, and that's why it's creating mutants. So that's kind of a fusion of two answers here. But the the other big question, why are mutants hated and feared? After all, this is a universe with Spider-Man, Ant-Man, and all manner of super bug people. Why are mutants such a big deal? Why do they garner such an extreme response? So I thought about this one for a while and I ended up with the idea that mutants need to be young. The idea that they are children specifically feels like a big point of difference. Like imagine a kid with the powers of Nitro, the supervillain who can explode. Their mutant power gives them the ability to explode into a big energy blast. It is not voluntary, it just happens. A mutant child could kill a bunch of human children and then all hell would break loose. It's kind of like the Stanford incident that starts the Civil War comics. Parents would want their children protected from these mutants. Schools would start expelling mutants. Some mutants are imprisoned. Some states make mutants illegal. Paranoia runs rampant. Parents do whatever they can to make sure their child is not a mutant, not necessarily because they hate mutants, but because they don't want their kid to get into trouble. If the first class of mutants, like Kitty, Rogue, and Nightcrawler are all on the young side, we can see the mutant issues spring up around them. They are ostracized. They are jailed. The X-Men save them, try to help them learn to control their powers. There could even be a religious element to it. Imagine Reverend Stryker yelling about how your children are in danger. These mutants are hiding in your schools, waiting to strike. If they don't kill your children, they're going to turn them. That's right, your child, your beautiful human boys and girls will become monsters. That's why you cannot let your children fraternize with these abominations. And some states would maybe have more progressive mutant policies. Some would probably do a don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. Some would register the mutants, but others, well, well you know what happened. Mutant children would be sent to jail, re-educated. Anti-mutant sentiment would be stoked daily on the Daily Bugle. You can map it to any modern day prejudice you want, but it needs to start with kids because kids are always used to generate this extreme emotional response. And that's the idea. Again, this is not a roadmap for how Marvel should deal with the X-Men. These are just my ideas of how some of these characters, especially in my head when I'm talking about casting these characters, how they all fit into the universe. So this is just one way that they could all be part of the X-Men universe. How do you think the mutants will be added to the MCU? Have they been there the whole time? Will they just pop up? Will there be an incursion where both sides just smush together? I want you to make your own video with your thoughts because as a YouTuber, videos are the only way I get information. And if you want to make your video look cool and sound amazing, I would recommend checking out this video's sponsor, Storyblocks. I had heard of Storyblocks before, but I wasn't super familiar. And guys, this is 100% going in my arsenal for future videos. I am sure you saw my motion graphics in this video, and that's just barely scratching the surface. I'm going to have so much fun with these in the future. They have a humongous library with 4K and HD stock footage, Premiere and After Effects templates, music, images, sound effects, so much more. Truly, it is everything you need to make a cool video in one place. They have flexible subscriptions, so you can get a plan that works for what you need without worrying about budgets. Seriously. Check out Storyblocks and sign up for their unlimited access plan at storyblocks.com slash Nando and start making cool videos. Thank you to everybody who continues to support the channel on Patreon. Thank you to everybody who listens to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking. Everybody who watches these videos on Nebula and everybody who follows me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch. I'm Nando View Movies on all those platforms. That's all I got. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.